Kobe White shared some advice he got from Phil Jackson. We're going to talk a little bit about that advice and how Kobe White has already been applying it, whether he realized it or not. We're just going to talk about Ayo Desumu currently in the best stretch of his career and how he can continue to build off that. Plus, Patrick Williams' injury opening up minutes for Julian Phillips and preview the Bulls versus Raptors going down tonight. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central. Your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host, Sarah Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, Let's go and get into this content for today. So, Kobe White shared uh, some advice that Phil Jackson gave him. You, I, I'm sure you guys have seen the clip by now of Phil Jackson talking to all the Bulls players. There's a, some funny clips that come out of it, like uh, like Tory Craig asking Phil Jackson, uh, you know, if he can convince Billy Donovan to give let him take a week off for Vegas, and Billy Donovan responding, "Well, if you rebound like Robin, absolutely." But Kobe White said this. He said he asked, "What was the main difference between Kobe Bryant and and Michael Jordan was?" And he said this. The main thing he said was that Kobe didn't have a conscience, and Michael Jordan did. Basically, if after the game Michael wasn't 50% from the field, he would kind of be disappointed. Kobe could go 7 for 25, and he really didn't care. And that's because we know Kobe White was one of the, I mean, Kobe, Kobe Bryant was one of the best competitors in the game of basketball. Yes, he held himself up to an amazing standard, and he wanted to give that on the court every single time he checked in. But Kobe White, like, I mean, Kobe Bryant never let a bad game really get to him too much. He came out and he killed it next game. And that's what we're seeing Kobe White develop into as well, right? We know that stretch where Kobe White couldn't hit a three-pointer where it was like over like three or four games in a row, but he never stopped shooting. He never let that get down on his mentality. He actually adapted his game and then started doing more driving, trying to get to the rim, uh, finishing around the rim, uh, opening up opportunities and lanes to pass his, up to the other players. And that's a, a mindset that I would love Kobe White to have. Yes, we want you to always be efficient from the field, but if you have those games of being of being inefficient, you still can impact the game. And Kobe White is finding ways to do that for the Chicago Bulls here recently, always finding a way. And I talked about it in that last game um, that we that we won is that what what Kobe White did is that he allowed himself to get get to the lane and then have these creative paths to get to big men and slashing players and things like that. We're seeing Kobe White really round out to such a high IQ basketball player. And then when you look at like his performance, the month of January so far for Kobe White, 21 points per game, 5.7 assists, 5.6 rebounds per game. He's still getting a, almost a steal per game in that time as well and not really turning the ball over much. Yeah, he does have an oh, average of over two uh, turnovers, but again, you know, we, he, can, he can be better than that. Shooting the ball 50, 49% from the field and, 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 four, and 39% from three-point range. Kobe White has been an efficient player in the month of January is really rounding out for him as well he's he, he's had 34 straight games of scoring in double digits and yes as a starting point guard and as one of the biggest pieces of the Chicago Bulls offense that shouldn't be like like a, a surprise there but Kobe White's season averages as well 18.8 points per game the highest efficiency really of his career four, five assists five rebounds 45 percent shooting the, the, the way that Kobe White's developing and how he's adding to his game leading up to his 24th birthday, which is next month in February on the 16th, is that Kobe's just, you're seeing the, the development of a player that isn't necessarily a star level. He has to do way more consistently before you can really say that uh, realistically, but he's having that type of impact for the Chicago Bears. He's turning into not only a player that can lead you in scoring, but an unselfish high IQ basketball player and beginning to see that develop in the Chicago Bulls uniform has been great to see, and he's not done yet. That's the, that's the beauty of this, right? As Kobe White continues to grow and learn, we're seeing him add things to his game week after week. We're seeing the way that he processes. The one thing that I've been pointing out about Kobe more recently than not is how, like, his now, the, 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 chain, the direction of speed that he's going, how, how, he, how he controls that pace and uses that to kind of fool defenders into fouling him or getting, getting underneath the basket, things like that. Kobe is really turning into a nice player, man. And, you know, he's, he's proving doubters like me. I, I did not think Kobe White was going to be the starting point guard this season. I just didn't. I thought Kobe White was still going to be an important role on this team coming off the bench, being that scorer. But he showed himself to be so much more than, than what I had 
peg for him. And I know a lot of Bulls fans saw this for Kobe and saw this potential in Kobe. And it's just good that he's bringing it all together. And so getting that advice from Phil Jackson, who is one of the best coaches to ever do it in the game of basketball, all the players that Phil Jackson is coaching, you know, to get to pick his brain a little bit. I think that's something that Kobe definitely needs to apply this game. You're going to have bad shooting nights. You're going to have nights where the, the shot's just not falling for you. But how else do you impact the game? The defense that Kobe White's playing, how active he's getting, trying to get charges and things like that. It, it, Kobe White is just, I've said it before, and I know I've waxed poetic about Kobe a lot this season because it's just great to see. It's been so long since we've really seen a player go from where he was, Kobe White coming off the bench, averaging a little over eight points per game, right, to be the player now that we're looking at and saying he's probably the best player we have on this team going forward if we do make all these moves, sending off DeMar, sending off Zach, and even without that, he's still the ascending player on this team that has now raised the expectations for the Chicago Bulls. And it's great to see. Great to see. So I, th- I thought I heard saw that quote and Kobe shared that advice that uh, that Phil Jackson gave him. And it was just something that it's like, yeah, Kobe, go out and apply it. And Kobe, uh, Kobe White really has, man, has done that for so long. And uh, it's been really consistent this season. When you look at the month of December, the month of January, Kobe's cooking. And, uh, you know, it doesn't seem like it's going to slow down any anytime soon. And I really appreciate that for Kobe because we got to see Kobe White grow right in front of our faces, man. And it's been a while since Bulls fans have been able to say that. But there's been another guard on the Chicago Bulls that's been uh, rising as well, and that is Io DeSumo. We got to talk a little bit about Io. Io has scored now 10-plus points in seven straight games for the first time in his career. And then when you look at what he's averaging so far in those seven games, 14 0.7 points per game. He's doing that on 56.5% shooting. He's 10 of 22 from behind the arc. And that defense, that defensive intensity has not stopped for Ayo DeSumo at all. And then even more so when you look at like the full month of January for Ayo DeSumo, he's been balling off the bench. 12.1 points per game, 50% shooting from the field, 42% shooting from three. And it's not like he's not taking him. He's taking almost three and a half three pointers per game, is he? Averaging two and a half assists per game three rebounds per game, right under a block per game. Like, Io DeSumo right now is playing some of the best basketball we've seen him play and the most consistent basketball we've seen him play as well. And it, again, much like with Kobe, it's the poise. Io DeSumo has now thrived in this bench role for, for the Chicago Bulls. And while he still does have a high ceiling, right, we, we can't say what Kobe White's going to turn into for sure. Me and Pat actually had the conversation over on Locked on Bulls, and I, and I presented it to Pat and said, hey, do you still think Io can become a starter again, or do you think his best role is going to be a high-level bench player for for, for, for uh, in the NBA? And, and me and Pat had that conversation, and Pat kind of said, well, you know, maybe he can become a starter, but if he does, maybe it's an Alice Caruso-type starter, a starter that you know is going to make, he's going to come out there and he's going to perform well for you, but maybe he's best suited coming off the bench. So I want to throw this to you guys. Like, how do you guys see right now? Coming off the sophomore slump that Io DeSumo had, which you got to give him credit for how he was able to not allow that sophomore slump to stop him from coming into the season, embracing a role coming off the bench, thriving that role as well, and 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 now is is really one of the important pieces of the Chicago Bulls team. Yeah, he's starting while Patrick Williams is out. He started a few games earlier in the in the, in the season, and he always really steps up. But we're seeing Io turn into kind of that Swiss Army knife player that I think he was always meant to be, a player that can score a little bit. And if you get them in the right situations where they're rebounding the ball, they're out in transition. Listen, I would assume with the way that he w- runs the fast break and finishes now around the rim, not still a dunker, but it's way better at finishing around the rim. One of the biggest things with Io last season was he got those layups and he missed them. He's making those this season. And so, you know, seeing that growth from Io, but do you, do you see Io as a player that ceiling is probably going to be really good bench player? Or do you guys still see those Drew Holiday comparisons that he was drawing kind of early in his career? I I don't know if he's ever going to have the scoring prowess of that. I mean, it's not that we haven't seen it. He was a scorer in college as well. Um, and and we're seeing just Io just understand the pace, understand his role. And that is why having a role is really so important for players. I, I think Io, Kobe to a degree as well, is really, really is a testament to that. Io starting as a starting point guard had a completely different needs that he needed to bring to the team and to that lineup considering some of the shortcomings that 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 core three players had injuries and things like that coming off the bench now for Io DeSumo his role is much more clear you defend you play with energy rebound push the break let the offense come to you and so 
while he's not having to set up offense a lot because they're not using him as a point guard uh, traditionally to set up that half-court offense, it's all about transition. It's all about pace. And we're seeing Io really thrive in that, in the confidence. He said, I got to give Io a lot of credit for not allowing the sophomore slump in the year that he had of starting, being the starting point guard, losing that starting role, coming into this season where a role wasn't, he could have easily fell out the rotation had Javon Carter played better, had Torrey Craig stayed healthy. But Io came into the season with the right mindset, finding a way to impact the game consistently, and he's now a player that Billy Donovan can't afford not to play. Yeah, injuries play a part in that as well, but even before the injuries went down, you have to play Io DeSumo. He gives you the best situation to win games, and the chemistry that he's built, Him having him and Drum come off the bench, and when, when Caruso's back coming off the bench, Torrey Craig's back coming off that bench, we have the bones to be one of the better benches in the NBA. And I'm just, I'm, I, I would assume was a big part of that. And I really want to give him credit as well as block. I would assume was recorded a, at least one block in five straight games, five straight games. He had a career high three blocks against the Portland Trailblazers. I'll be, but it's just, I was really stepping up majorly for the Chicago Bulls, man. And I don't, I don't know how people can still deny. It. You still have people that, that are kind of doubters around IO think maybe the Bulls should move him. But to me, the contract that he's on, sophomore slump kind of worked in the Bulls' favor. In that case, they didn't have to pay him a whole hell of a lot of money, which he, he could have got had he really had a, a great season being the starting point guard last season. But he's now locked in, and um, and, and he's thriving in the role. And I got to give him credit and hats off to Io DeSumo for just how he's been able to perform for the Chicago Bulls here. But all right, moving on from that, Patrick Williams is out with injury. He has a boot on, uh, boot on his foot. And so he uh, kind of added some clarity. So. The, the team wanted him to wear that boot on his foot more for protective reasons than it being assigned by like a doctor or something. So, you know, you take that from what you will with it. But they're being protective over Patrick Williams. Patrick Williams doesn't want to wear this boot, but he's doing it because the team asked him to. And the injury for Patrick Williams allows him some time to kind of sit on the sideline, get, get back to it. And it's clear that that injury was bothering him. Patrick Williams, when Zach Levine first went down, was averaging something crazy. It was like 14 and 14 and a half points per game, almost 15, five rebounds, like three or four assists, a block and a steal per game is what he was averaging when Zach first went down. And then he went down with injury and he never quite got back on that. So I do think that the Bulls are being protective over that. They feel like that maybe a weaker part of the schedule. Let's let that foot heal up so we can get you back out there and you can be back performing. Now, I'm not trying to throw Patrick Williams a whole lot of bell of saying just the foot is the only reason. He played pretty well in the game before he went down. We know that he can be more aggressive, things like that. But if that foot soreness is in the back of his mind at all and affecting the way that he plays, maybe the Bulls are having him sit so that when he comes back in there, he can unlock that mindset. Patrick Williams talked about the energy. He says this, you always want to take caution. Just one of the, those situations, you know, the benefit, whether I need it or not, the benefit of it is just reloading it for a couple of days or whatever the case may be, kind of uh, definitely outweighs the look of it. Naturally, I said, hell no. I know what it looks like to wear a boot. You never want to wear one of those. But they kind of spoke to me about the benefit of wearing it. So the Bulls team and doctors, I'm sure, convinced and Patrick Williams to just, listen, wear the boot, get yourself protected. Um, and, you know, it is what it is when it comes down to it. We, Patrick Williams, when he plays well, when Patrick Williams is locked in, he, he definitely affects the game of basketball, and he affects it for the Bulls, the impact that he can make defensively, things like that. You know, hearing that the injury, the, the soreness got larger and larger over the time period uh, since the season really started on and he got that injury at first, you know, it, it, there's some concerns about that. And, and feet are a difficult thing to heal when playing basketball because everything you do is is based off your foot, your your, your footing and, and uh, your lateral quickness, things like that. So, you know, wanting Kobe, I mean, wanting Patrick Williams to kind of take some time off to re-heal that foot just makes sense in the long run of things. And, you know, the Bulls may absolutely be looking at it and saying, listen, Pat, get your rest where you can, big fella. And let's see let's see if Pat can come back, man. If Pat can come back, if he can get more like what he was initially when Zach Levine went down, if he can bring that back to the Chicago Bulls, it, it helps winning. But with that, it, it opens up opportunities for Julian Phillips. And that's the next thing to talk about is that this is Julian Phillips' opportunity now to get some minutes. He showed it against Portland, a weaker team. I don't expect him to fall out of the rotation against the Toronto Raptors, which we'll talk about a little bit here. But this is this is Julian's opportunity. This is your time, right? Um, do not let, let this opportunity pass. Uh, like I was about to quote Eminem, but let me stop that. Uh, 
Julian Phillips, what he did against Toronto opened some eyes. It's a weaker team, and yeah, the pessimists are still going to look at that and say, all right, you did it against the Portland Trailblazers. Can you do it again? This is an opportunity for hopefully the coaching staff to realize you have a young player that, while you know, has his rookie flaws, he's going to make his rookie mistakes. You're going to have to go through that process to really come out on the other side of that and hopefully have a player that's ready to perform and give you consistent, solid minutes. But this is Julie Phillips' opportunity, man. Torrey Craig's down. Patrick Williams is down. We know Terry Taylor hasn't really played well for the Bulls. That is another kind of safety net Billy Donovan could go to. But if he's looking at it in fairness, Terry Taylor isn't giving us anything Julian Phillips can't. How Julian Phillips capitalizes on this moment could make the, be the difference between him spending the rest of the season in the G League and spending the rest of the season on the back end of the Bulls bench, but maybe getting six, eight minutes here and there every couple of games. And yeah, that's not great for development to not have that consistent role, but it's better than anything else that he's, that he's carving out a time. And then when Torrey Craig, when Patrick Williams comes back, Billy Donovan still has to look at it and say, listen, I had this kid who gave us some energy, gave us some rebounding, gave us block shots. I got to find a way to work him in there. Now, let's just hope that it doesn't turn into small ball center time because that's definitely something Billy Donovan could do, but we'll end up seeing with that one. But we also got a game going down tonight. The Chicago Bulls are taking on the Toronto Raptors tonight in Chicago. The Bulls currently right now sit in a six-game home winning streak, looking to make it seven. This will be the longest winning streak that the Bulls have had at home for quite a while if the Bulls can finish it out. And this game comes down to a couple of different things for the Bulls. The Toronto Raptors are a team we always play close. Even looking at the last game that we played them, that was a team that literally was Bruce Bowen's, uh, or Bruce Brown's first game with that team, and he fit in well. Now, there are some injuries on both sides, players being out. Of course, we got Levine, Craig Williams out of this game. R.J. Baird is going to be out. Emmanuel quickly is doubtful, and Jacopoto is listed as questionable as well. I expect a couple of those guys to play again. Every time somebody's listed, it doesn't mean they're not going to play. But this is a, a team that the Bulls know can give them fits. Historically, it doesn't matter who's on that roster. They can give them fits. And so the Bulls' defense, again, has got to be one of the keys in this game. you got to limit that shooting. You can't allow Emmanuel quickly, if he does play, and Gary Trent Jr. to go off on you because we have done that before. Dennis Schroeder as well. No one allows Schroeder to be the one to go off on you. But how do you contain Scotty Barnes? That's the player that really had a big game against the Chicago Bulls last time. You're looking at Patrick Williams not being out. At, he's not going to be starting at the power forward position. That's going to mean that DeMar's probably starting at power forward. You're looking at DeMar, how Julian Phillips does against Scotty Barnes as well, right? In the minutes that he plays, probably going to put a little bit of Alex Caruso on him as well. But with Jacob Porto out in this game, I know I said it in the last game and we didn't do it. Nikola Vucevic and Andre Drummond should be able to have big games against this Toronto Raptors team, especially in rebounding the ball. Defense, rebounding. We have to do those two things first. Those have to be at the forefront of what we do. If we can do those things solidly enough, listen, we're going to be able to get dubs. But the Bulls just, they don't always do it consistently. Sometimes they fall. This team is going to go on a run. I, I, I don't know when it's going to happen, where it's going to happen, but this team is going to go on a run. Whether that means Scotty Barnes getting hot, Bruce Brown getting hot, Denny Schroeder, uh, Gary Trent, somebody's going to start go, go on a scoring run, and the Toronto Raptors are going to go on a run in this game. How do the Bulls match that? This isn't a huge three-point shooting team by any stretch of the imagination. We saw a game against the, the, the Portland Trailblazers where, because they weren't able to hit threes, our lack of three-point shooting didn't really hurt us too much, but they have three-point shooters. They have players that can hit the three ball on this team, and we've seen Scotty Barnes get into a rhythm against the Bulls before. The Bulls have to play effective offense tonight. We just have to, and if we don't, it's going to be a, a, a tall game for the Chicago Bulls. Shoot the ball effectively, move the ball around, get everybody involved. We are always much better when we get everybody involved in the game of basketball. That's what this Bulls team has to do again tonight. Kobe, DeMar, Vooch, looking for big nights from you guys. Um, DeMar, Toronto Raptors always kind of give DeMar a fit. They'll put Bruce Brown on him at times, things like that. And Kobe's going to have to force the mismatch. And once Kobe does force that mismatch, how do you now use that opportunity to find your open shooters? So, uh, listen, this, I would love to see the Bulls get a win here tonight. Let's get closer to 500. Again, we'd move to two games below 500 if that's the case. But as we know, we're Sisyphus. Every time we get closer and closer to, uh, to 500, something happens every single time, whether it's an injury, whether it's a losing streak, whether it's us losing t uh, <laughs> against teams that we were previously beating, something always happens. But the Bulls can't let that happen tonight. 
You're at home in front of the UC before you go back out on the road briefly, take care of business, keep giving the, the United Center fans something to cheer about because we know once we get our fans in the game at the UC, it becomes different. So, you know, this is a, they, they have one game at home. They go back on the road against uh, uh, against Charlotte, and then we got two games at home against Minnesota and Sacramento. So, listen, take care of business tonight, Bulls. Go out there and get the dub. Nikola Vucevic, stop shooting so many goddamn threes. Stop shooting so many goddamn threes. Get your ass in the paint, boy. Get your ass in the paint, man. Come on, what we doing? But <laughs> love to see that uh, game. We'll be live tonight for the pregame, the halftime hangout, and postgame shows on the channel. Make sure you guys hit the subscribe button for that. That's my time for today. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for the mailbag, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related, thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See red if you can, y'all. Peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. 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 Media.